Hello, I'm Beverly Kirk, director of the CSIS Ideas Lab, here with Zahir Salul. He's with the Syrian American Medical Society, and we're talking about the targeted violence against medical professionals in Syria. You were recently there. Um, can you talk about the impact of this targeting against healthcare workers and, and what it's really doing to the lives of Syrians? In the words that cannot describe what I have seen in Syria, I was in a visit to the city of Aleppo, which is mm -hmm. a major city in Syria. The population of the area which I visited is about 3 million. Uh, it has 10 hospitals, but they have shortage of every basic uh, medical needs, from uh, gloves to um, IV solutions to oral antibiotics. There is no CT scanner that uh, serve all of these population. Um, and uh, the physicians are suffering. There's only 75 physicians who are serving the whole population of 3 million. Down 75? 75, uh, 75 physicians down from 3,000 before the crisis. So definitely it's a struggle, daily struggle for, uh, for the physicians to trying to save lives. Many of the patients who have chronic diseases are not getting their medications because of shortage of medications. Many of patients on dialysis are not getting dialysis because th there is shortage of dialysis machines. Mm -hmm. And the uh, surgeries are done in unsafe situations. What do you expect when you have an area in that size where you have no electricity, no communication, no diesel fuel, no anesthesia medications? So it's terrible from a medical perspective. Uh, there is this integration of the whole public uh, health care system in Syria, including the area that I visited. How are Syrian doctors and administrators dealing with this crisis? And how are groups such as yours and other NGOs uh, helping out, or at least trying to help out? They're making the best out of the circumstances. Uh, the environment is very austere in mm -hmm. terms of uh, very limited resources. Uh, but they are trying to manage. I met uh, one of the hero, I would say, uh, of humanitarian work in the city of Aleppo. His name is Dr. Ablaziz, uh, who left his uh, post from the University of Aleppo. Uh, he was a surgeon, very known surgeon, and now he's overseeing uh, the medical care in, the, in these 10 hospitals. Um, his life is at risk because these hospitals can be bombed and shelled every day, but he's trying to manage and organize the work over there. We're trying to support uh, these uh, heroes with uh, medications, sending them medications, medical supplies. We are providing training for physicians inside Syria uh, to uh, make, the, make, make sure that they are de dealing with the trauma uh, cases that they are facing every day. And we are also providing them with even diesel fuel uh, to run their hospitals. Um, and we are in contest, uh, con uh, continuous communication with them to make sure that their um, needs are addressed, at least uh, from what we can uh, gather. What specific policies or steps uh, can be taken by the United States government, other governments around the world, the international community, to try to help protect uh, the healthcare workers in Syria? The most important thing is to end the crisis, uh, because right now we have disaster happening in Syria on a daily basis. Uh, we have a preaching of the uh, Medical Neutrality Act every minute. We have physicians who are forced uh, to leave Syria every minute. So we have physicians who are killed um, on, on a weekly basis. Uh, we have uh, ambulances that is being targeted, hospitals that are destroyed. So the best thing is to end the crisis and have the political will to do it. So that requires a leadership from the U.S. government and the international community. Secondly, we have to protect these physicians and hospitals. Uh, No-fly zone is an option. Uh, it's not an easy option, but that's something that uh, many of us feel that it is needed to, to protect the population and the physicians and providing them with the resources that they are needing through cross-border humanitarian assistance. One last question. How dangerous is it for you to go and try to help? Well, it's not more dangerous than what's happening to the physicians who are inside Syria and the patients who are inside Syria. I have a family in Syria and they are exposed to uh, what I described on a daily basis. So to me, it's a duty to go and help. Um, I feel fulfilled when I go and see these heroes trying to save lives uh, at the risking, risking their lives. Um, I hope that the world would pay attention more to uh, these humanitarians who are doing great job in spite of the circumstances and the environment. All right, Sahir Salul, thank you. Thank you.